Today I am going to show you the extraction of right maxillary third molar. It is going to be a simple and straightforward procedure as the tooth is completely erupted and has conical roots. This is a gauze soaked with a topical anesthetic. I am going to apply topical anesthetic at the site of injection. The site of injection for PSA nerve block is depth of mucobuccal fold at the apex of maxillary second molar. So I am applying the pressure over the injection site. The reason I apply pressure along with topical anesthetic is to induce pressure anesthesia. Topical anesthetic along with pressure anesthesia induces a profound topical anesthesia. So the patient doesn't feel the needle prick at all. Now I am inserting the needle at the site. Make sure that the needle of your syringe is at a 45 degree to the occlusal plane. Depth of needle insertion is 16 mm. Aspiration is negative. Deposit 1 to 1.5 ml LA solution slowly. For greater palatine nerve block, first we have to locate the greater palatine foramen. Foramen is located at the junction of alveolar bone and the palatine bone. This is the junction. So I am going to start the palpation from the first molar and move back. I can feel a depression here. Most of the time this depression is located between the second and third molar. This is the second molar and this is the third molar. And we have the depression between the two at this point. Now I am applying topical anesthetic at the site of injection. And as mentioned earlier, I am applying mild pressure along with topical anesthetic. For greater palatine nerve block, you should approach the syringe from the contralateral side. Depth of insertion of needle is 4 to 5 mm. Now I am going to aspirate in two planes. Biplanar aspiration is negative. I will start depositing the LA now. Amount of LA to be deposited is 0.5 ml. You can now see slight bulging and blanching of the tissue at the site of injection. When I withdraw the needle, I ask my assistant to keep the suction at the injection site, especially in case of greater palatine nerve block. This is to make sure that no LA solution drops flow to the patient's throat. The taste of LA solution is very bitter and may induce gag reflex which we don't want. Now, even after a successful nerve block, many times a patient is not able to differentiate between pain and pressure. So to make sure that the patient can differentiate between pain and pressure, First, I lightly poke the tissue on the contralateral side to show the patient what actual pain feels like. Then I check on the side where I have given the nerve block. As the patient has already experienced the pain on the contralateral side, he will be able to differentiate pain from pressure. The patient does not have any pain on instrumentation. The mucoperiosteal reflection starts from the mesiobuccal papilla using the prying motion of the periosteal elevator. I continue to reflect the gingiva. The problem with using periosteal elevator for gingival reflection is that it is difficult to reflect the gingiva behind the third molar with it.
आई एम रिफ्लेक्टिंग द मीजो पैलेटल पैपिला विद द प्राइंग मोशन एंड देन आई कंटिन्यू विद द रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ द पैलेटल जिंजाइवा To reflect the gingiva behind the third molar, I use a sharp Lucas bone curet. Ideal depth of gingival reflection should be approximately four to five mm. Now with the periosteal elevator, I am checking if there is sufficient space between the second and third molar. to place an elevator looks like there is enough space to place an elevator so i am going to place my warwick james straight elevator in the space this is a warwick james straight elevator i am inserting my elevator between the two teeth with the flat surface towards the third molar i will support the second molar with my finger firmly placed on its occlusal surface Now I rotate the elevator so as to lift the third molar out of its socket. As the roots of the third molar are conical, it is easier to luxate the tooth. You can see that the tooth is luxated and I just have to pick it out of the socket using a forceps. I am using a maxillary third molar forceps to deliver the tooth out of its socket. You can see the roots are conical as shown in the radiograph. I am going to irrigate the socket with normal saline and the irrigation should be done with high pressure. This is the pressure pack that I have prepared for the extraction socket. The gauze should be tightly condensed for a proper pressure packing. The pack should be placed directly over the extraction socket. the pack should not interfere with the occlusion by coming between upper and lower teeth then only will it be able to apply pressure over the socket also make sure that there are no blood spots on the patient's face after the procedure here i am using saline soaked gauze to clean the patient's face <laughs> 